it is four o'clock and we are starting with lemurs today hey everybody it's good to see a lot of people coming on to these drawing classes and like i said we're going to be starting with these awesome little guys um because of the fact that there are over a hundred species of lemurs um, we're going to stick with ring-tailed lemurs which are these ones you'll notice uh, King Julian from Madagascar is one of these types of lemurs. Um, if you look at the tail, all these little black lines, um, there is 13, exactly 13 on e every tail of a lemur. Not that you have to put 13, but it's a good, good little fact. But yeah, so because of the hundred or so different species, I'm focusing on this lovely one. Um, if you can see, this is the one I'm going to show you to draw for the first bit. You can see that their um, their heads and their bodies are kind of a little different proportion than a lot of other creatures. And their arms and their feet are going to be quite a bit longer because they do have those jumping capabilities and they are known to live in trees quite a lot. Um, they live off of leaves and fruits mostly and that's kind of how I'd like to chill out with my day anyway so um for all of you who are going to start out with this i'm going to start with a simple kind of circle shape for the back part of his leg and that's just going to look like that uh, remember not to draw too hard or else it's not going to erase very well but i'm going to draw a little bit darker so you guys can see what i'm doing but again we're going to start basic shapes that's always what we kind of go with until we kind of feel comfortable with it. The next circle is going to be pretty close to the same size and it's going to touch your other circle. And then you're going to just kind of try and draw it pretty close to the same size. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's what we're at so far. And because we've got these two circles, that's where we're going to put the legs. So the rear end of the lemur is going to come in right here, almost kind of like a, like a giant nine. <laughs> in a way, and then you're gonna go to the center part of this, well, not really the center. If you go from the center where this dot's gonna be, you can go just between the center of that and the side of the circle, and that's where you're gonna start his back leg. Um, if you don't wanna do it this way, you can always draw an oval also, much like this, and you'll see it comes out quite a ways from the circle. That's what you want. You know what, I'll do it that way for making it a little easier for some people. <laughs> Um, for me also. So if you do it that way, you can see where that leg's going to be. You don't want it touching the side of this circle because that's going to be way too big for his back leg. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring it this way. Now, if you've drawn any sort of cats, it goes kind of similar in a way, but it's going to be a little elongated because, again, lemurs, long limbs, small heads. <laughs> And then the foot is going to be probably just a bit of a triangle, a really awkward sort of triangle, kind of like that. And that's how we're starting. So you'll notice the bottom of your triangle is going to be flat against the ground because that's where he's going to be stepping on. Then it's going to angle backwards to the back line of where the foot's going to be. And that's kind of like the weird little triangle you're going to get. A little bit of an obtuse angle. And so far, we're already on a good kind of have to get through this. Ooh, nice to see more people joining. Hello. Um, but yeah, so if you haven't, or if you've just joined right now, we've got two circles, an oval right here. Then we've got two lines kind of going down and getting closer together. And then we're going to add this obtuse triangle to make that the back leg area. We can go back and fix the rest once we've got all the shapes in, but I'm not going to do that until we've got every other part. So when you've got this, you can kind of see where this angle or this circle and this circle kind of meet or oval kind of meet. And you're going to use just a little below that. And that's going to go down to the front of this circle, just below. And that's where the bottom of his belly is going to be. So usually they're very furry and very fluffy. So we're going to leave some room for that. And that's why we're going to just kind of leave it very light for now. From there, you can kind of right near this the bottom center of this circle here that's where you can start to kind of 
put in the front of the leg. So what I've done is I've done a, a little line here. It's kind of angled this way a bit, and then it goes this way even more to show that it's going forward. So that's kind of what I've done there. And I'm gonna bring it down all the way to the bottom of where this foot is, because his hand's gonna start right at the bottom there. And if you want, you can do another kind of triangle there if you're feeling uncomfortable with just leaving it as it is. But with this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start a little ways up from that, probably about here. And we're gonna pull this up and it gets bigger, if you can tell, it gets bigger from this spot coming up into this area. And that's because much like we did kind of with this, and with this area here, we're going to bring it this way and then bigger this way. And it's going to come into the very front of this circle. So you can kind of see where that's starting to make sense, right? So we've got that. And then coming at the top of this circle here, I'm going to give you guys a break to kind of um, get to this point again, because I know I'm going a little faster than I need to. But you're going to go from here and you're going to kind of make it come up and then down. So if you look at it this way in an entirety, that's kind of like a bean shape, right? So if I'm going to do that and then I'm going to bring this out from the front, right? And I'll bring it up like this. So that way you've got this nice bean here. You've got your two circles, your oval. All of that so far it's going pretty good. This part I'm gonna bring down a little bit because I didn't make it quite very even and I'm gonna erase that triangle because we don't quite need it anymore. Yeah so there we are to start. I know that when they start with shapes they don't quite look like a lot and they can kind of look a, a little uh, chunky at times. And the other part too is depending on how you want your lemur to look, we can change where the stomach goes. So if you think he needs a bit of a skinnier body, you can bring it up towards those circles and bring it just above the lemur's knee. Or we can lengthen this part. I kind of like how he is. He can be a little bit chunky. I like him like that. Um, and then we're going to draw another circle for the head. And this circle is going to be smaller than the other two. And I just make sure that when you've got it, it's just quite a bit higher than what you'd expect. So this next coming here, I'm going to put the circle about there, maybe. And then I'm going to work this out because remember, we always kind of mold things around when we're kind of figuring out how things work. Um, if you think you have to do it perfectly right away, that's not the case at all. You have lots of time, lots of ability to kind of move things around. Like you can see, I'm sort of starting to move this around a bit too. So I've lowered that knee a bit so it looks more like he's got a little more athletic legs. Oh, throwing my pencil. Yeah. And then I'm going to again erase this part. So you'll notice here, it'll go down and then over. Much like if you see, you know, a cat or things like that, they have kind of similar bottom parts of their legs. Not quite, but we can use it for a reference anyway. And I'm going to do that because the, the feet are going to be really flat because they're almost like hands, right? Um, they are very close um, to us with fingers and, and and things like that. So I'm going to make sure that that's quite flat. And then I'm going to do a big long S shaped to go up. And this is going to be his tail. And then I'm just going to make a little round bit at the top and then bring it down and try and kind of keep it close to the other line. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Some of them are really fluffy, so you can do that if you want to make it a little fluffier totally welcome to. Seems to get a little bigger by the end. Um, a lot of times tails are used for balance and it's no different with things like lemurs and monkeys and even cheetahs when they're chasing prey they use their tails for balance when they're running. 
And with this, I'm going to go ahead, because it's my favorite part of lemurs, <laughs> and I'm going to start coloring the little rings. And like I said, there's exactly 13 rings on a lemur's tail. So I'm going to go ahead and make 13 of those little rings. And remember, this is just a doodle, so it doesn't have to be perfect. There's 13. I always like the end of the tail to have that little bit there. And since that's already kind of dealt with in our doodle, then we can go ahead and work with the rest of everything. So um, he's kind of got a little, little bit of girth to him. And I think this back part is a little bit too far back. So I'm going to move it a little. And I'm going to just flatten out this section a little more. And I'm going to go ahead and angle this stomach area a little more because I think, I don't know how you guys did, but I'm going to just start erasing some of these shapes. And I think I gave them a little too much, um, a little too much body. So we're going to, we're going to fix that a little bit. So I'm going to bring this down here. I'm going to let his arms kind of come a little straighter and I might make his front arms a little thinner because he's got smaller front arms that he will his back, his back legs. And remember, you just want to make sure that this matches here. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm kind of happier with that. And I like how it is. And remember, we still have to do the other legs and stuff. So it might be a little different there. But before I get into too much more detail here, I'm going to go ahead and do this kind of curved shape for the inside of that one leg. It kind of matches this. You don't want it to be too curved in or else it starts to look a little strange. And he's probably going to have one leg a little forward because, you know, balance, if he's standing on a tree or if he's going to move, that's going to be one thing that you're going to look at is where the other feet are in accordance with the rest of him. Um, a lot of times when you see lemurs, they've got their legs up and they're kind of hunched and sitting um, and this guy looks like he's kind of a little bit on the move. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to kind of copy the same idea of the, the back leg. And I'm going to create that flat kind of part at the bottom. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just starting off our doodles and we're going to have another one we're going to draw too. So if you do go back and want to draw this, you're more than able to take a look at, at what we've got going on. And just remember to be kind with yourself. It's always, it's always better to enjoy what you're doing than to be angry and still doing it. Um, so I like how that looks. Bring that leg forward a little bit more. Because we're looking to make him seem like he's going to move. All right, so. For the head as we're going, oh wait, hold on, we gotta fix this. <laughs> um, I'm gonna keep this, the front legs pretty similar because I don't want to make it look too different. And we've got another one where it shows him kind of moving forward and we'll deal with that after. Um, so this one, I'm gonna leave it like that. Maybe put his foot a little farther forward. If you feel like you wanna add some little fingers in there, they always have very long back ends of their hands and then very long fingers. Um, so if you're looking at that, you can kind of just add that in there. And yeah, I kind of like how that looks. So we're going to move on to the next part. With this part, and you guys are whoop, more than welcome to comment if you like. I always like a good conversation while I'm drawing on a Sunday. Um, all right, so when you're looking at a lemur's face, you'll notice that they have the black rings around their eyes. They have the kind of gray top to their, their head, almost looks like a piece of hair. Um, and then they've got the black sort of muzzle. So I'm going to draw kind of line here and then a line there. So it kind of looks like that. 
but just not as sharp. And then I'm going to bring it across the bottom and then out this way. So the best kind of way I can describe this shape is if I do this, and if you draw like a 3D square, the only difference between this and my terrible square right now is that um, this is going to be wider on the top and it's going to come out and then the rest of the bottom of the muzzle is going to go flat if that makes any sense <laughs> so that's how i've kind of done that then i'm going to look at where the cheek goes and if you notice they tend to have a little bit of a square sort of disposition with their heads so i'm going to show you that by doing this so i went like this and angled it in like this and then i went this way into the same thing this way but it's a little longer because that side of the face is showing a little more so that's why i kind of did it that way and then when i feel comfortable i can take away all those extra spots that i don't need it's kind of like they have a little m at the top of their nose there and that's where that white part comes down and meets that nose so i'm gonna do an m here and then it's kind of funny because it almost looks like they have a w coming in on the side so if you're kind of confused on how to do that, the very first top part, again, is an M. And then that line of the M here will become the first side of your W going diagonally down. So that would give them that kind of look on their noses. And then they've got these little lines here that show where their little holes are in their nose. And because we're just doodling it, I'm going to go ahead and really lightly kind of shade that in to give it kind of the effect of being a bit darker. So you can still see the lines that you've drawn, but you're kind of blocking in where everything else is going to go. So the next part that I've got is I'm going to angle this back again. So he's got the cheek area, the little bit of an angle on the top of the head, and then it coming back like that. So you can see where the part of his head's going to be. I'm going to bring it down a little bit though, because I kind of want a little bit. Right. And then the ears are just, again, a little bit of a large triangle on each side. And you want to try and just angle it out a little bit so it doesn't look too off. And that's what you've got for there. The next thing you're going to look at after that is the top of the part here. It kind of starts poking down, same around the area where that nose bit is. And then just before it hits the top of this ear, it's going to connect. Right? And that, again, is going to be shaded in a little. This part will be lighter than the nose is. This is actually quite dark if you were to look at a lemur. So I'm going to just darken that a little bit more. Make sure I can still see some of that line. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so we're right here. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming. And then I'm going to start with the eyes. So if you look at a lemur, if you were to look at this, you can see the eyes are, again, on each side of the nostrils, just like normal, just like you would have anything else. The nice thing is we already have this kind of M shape to give us an idea where it's going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and draw an eye there. And don't worry if you have to do this a couple times. Eyes are difficult. And I'm going to do the eye here. And it might look really weird at first because, again, those eyes are covered with that black ring. That might be one of those things that you want to just kind of take a few seconds to practice on. Um, you want to make those sort of even. Um, but it shouldn't be too, too difficult. And then I'm going to go ahead and just create a little bit of a ring around the eyes. Give it a little bit of a ring, a little more on the lower part and on the back end. And you'll notice too, if you're looking at like actual lemur pictures, um, even the one in the drawing tutorial photo I showed before our session for this, um, that the black piece around the eye can be different. Like it looks thick in some areas and thinner in, in other areas. And that's just one thing you kind of want to decide what you're doing with. For me, I'm going to just mm, I'm gonna do something like that. And then they have like this really kind of creepy glare with them. 
because they have a very stark sort of look when it comes to their eyes. They're very uh, piercing, I guess you could say. So I'm gonna go ahead, fix that a little bit. Give my lemur his eye. I'm gonna go ahead on the other side. You can enter, you know, get into that circle a bit. If you do look at them though, their eyes can be quite round. Either they look really surprised all the time or they look really tired or really sleepy. <laughs> it doesn't seem like there's much of an in-between there. If you have pencil crayons with you, they often have like this really beautiful amber color to their eyes or an orange to them, which I always find very interesting. Um, like I said earlier, the pupil in their eye is very striking, so when you do put it in, um, it can look kind of creepy if you have it a certain way. You don't even have to put them in if you don't like it, but I'm going to put those in because I kind of like how he looks. It's almost Halloween. We're fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, so here we go with that. I'm going to put some lines in the ears here. And then I'm going to show you guys that this part here is going to be where that shadow comes in for his arms and things. So I just drew a line that kind of goes back into the forearm here. And this part's all going to stay white, and then the front of his arms are going to be the gray color that's see on his head. I'm not going to pay a lot of attention to the direction of fur like we kind of do. Um, I'm just going to keep it very general. As we know, if there's anything that's fur on the arms, the fur will either face back and down or just start kind of going down. It depends on the length of the fur. Um, a lot of times it can be a little diagonal in back. That's okay. We're going to work through that. And you don't want to go all the way to the end of his arm because it gets lighter as you go back. I'm going to leave it to about that because the front paws are often white and then they have the darker parts underneath there for the pads of their, their hands. So I'm going to just kind of leave it at that. And then I'm going to bring the rest of the fur coming back this way on the back of his body. And you'll notice too, again, as I do this, I'm gonna stop about there because his belly is gonna be white too. And so I'm gonna let it get that way. It gets darker as you go back again. Um, a lot of times they have lots of browns in there um, because we're working with pencil. I'm not gonna worry about the color too much. Just where the darker parts of the shading are. And then it kind of, ends about there and then the rest of their fur going down their leg is just the same as the front. You'll see that there will be oops, there'll be a little bit of a light spot here if it's the inside of his leg coming out. Um, if not, if you prefer to show just most of the darker part of the fur, you can do that. I'm going to leave a little room there just to kind of give the idea of maybe it turning white as it goes into the lower part of his belly. And then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of erase some spots that I don't think I'm happy with. And then I'm going to do the same thing underneath the belly. And again, the parts that are darker are the pads of the feet in the back area there. And again, I think this foot's a little too low for what I've been doing with the rest of the feet, so I'm going to kind of just even that out. And like I said, if I'm going a little too fast, you can always ask me some questions about certain sections if you're having trouble with it. Or if I just, you know, went a little too too quick through that section, just let me know. And I can answer any questions you've got. And I kind of like the look on his face. It's not very conventional. <laughs> um, but I like it, so I'm going to leave it. Um, if you even look at this one, too, it's the same sort of thing. It's just drawn a little bit differently. Um, you'll notice the circles around the eyes, a little different, a little lighter, and his eyes are a little smaller here. I like that also, you know, gives it a little character. But yeah, so that's this kind of formation for a ringtail lemur. Um, where are we at? And that's the first song they're drawing today, so... 
if you've gotten this far without having to go back or you know if you're right on par with me it's pretty awesome good job everybody um if you're still coming up and working on things that's totally fine um I'll give you guys a few minutes, but I'm going to draw some angles around here to sort of help in case you've been a little bit behind in any way. So if I'm looking at the back, there's that arch here, the front chest area it can either have a little bit of an arch or it can be straight. I'm going to straighten it out a tiny bit. It's still got a curve to it, so I'm going to put an arrow there. The back leg has that kind of curve to it. And then the tail is kind of like a really long S shape. And I'll just remind you also 13 of those rings on the tail. So if you haven't seen these guys jump, go on YouTube, search up lemurs. They're really fun to watch, um, and they're really interesting. If you haven't watched Zabumafu, and, you know, well, you have to at least watch one. Just watch one. <laughs> Zabumafu is a different type of lemur. They're pretty cool also. They, they seem a little scarier to me. I'm not sure why. You guys are quiet today. But yeah, so that's kind of where I go. I know this guy kind of has a bigger muzzle area than I kind of would have liked, but uh, I'm good with it. I like how he looks. And again, we're just kind of doodling. Nothing ever shows up or goes exactly the same always. So just remember that too. Everybody messes up. Everybody has moments. Bob Ross would say happy little accidents. We've said multiple times in our series here. And again, I'm just using a mechanical pencil with my, uh, I think this sketchbook is from uh, Universal. Again, doesn't really matter as long as you're enjoying what you're doing. If you're getting into many, like, more detailed and more quality work than just a doodle or two, then you might want to go with something, you know, um, Strathmore is a good brand, always good paper. Much like if you were to go through watercolors, Arches paper is amazing for watercolor. Not for this maybe, but if you're wanting to do a watercolor, you know, can't, can't argue with that. So the difference between this guy, you'll notice his head's a little different shape than this one. Um, and he's kind of a little cuter to me, which I'm good with. And his body, his legs are a little longer in this one, which I appreciate a little more when I drew it. But this guy's kind of got a more solid base to me. Um, so there's positives and negatives of each part. And depending on what you're kind of doing with it or how he's moving is going to dictate where those parts of his body are going. Um, now, if you're going to do something like this guy, where his legs are reaching for things, this is where we're going to start getting into elongated shapes. Um, if you're looking at animation or thing, you can look at the movement of animals, or um, there's actually an artist that I've been watching who has been showing animation and the movement between, you know, even a person going to do a, a punch and it shows movement in the whole body and then brings in the arm so if you're looking at things like lemurs jumping they're going to have that crouch and then that their body's going to move forward before the rest of their arms do a little bit and it's really interesting it's, it's quite a lot of um, physics actually when you're doing animation um, even when you're looking at drawing things like this that are even like small movements uh, let's go like this. then you can see this part here is going to be elongated, whereas here it's just kind of stationary, if you will. So I'll give you guys a few minutes to finish up your drawing here, just in case, and then I will move us into the next drawing, which is just a little bit different. 
but might be a little more helpful. The head's turned a little ways so you don't draw both eyes, which can be helpful for some people if you're not quite comfortable with the full um, forward looking face. Um, and then, yeah, that should take us to the end of the session. And on to our next uh, kind of choose your own uh, what class we're going to do next. <laughs> Um, like I was saying, I always kind of like to look up some little facts of animals that we're drawing. So um, these guys are known to be meticulous when they're in cleaning. Um, so they, they're they always trying to be clean, I guess, which is pretty funny. Because when they have, um, when the males compete, they actually have scent glands on their wrists that they put on their tail to make their tails smell. And they um, communicate with other animals with their smells. So it's interesting to know that they are very clean animals, yet they are smelly. <laughs> Which, you know, pretty funny. They also wet nose primates, so they, uh, they will always have a wet or damp nose. And um, yeah, the, the, the biggest lemurs, I think, can be up to three feet tall and up to 10 pounds, which is pretty, pretty large. <laughs> Um, small child, really. Um, so, like, when you're looking at them, I always thought them to be very small, but they can actually be quite large. So, the more you know. All right. So, with this guy, you can kind of see that his body's kind of angled a little more. And so, we're going to do, instead of doing two circles, we're going to do one large oval. Make it a little bit of a fatter oval there. And it kind of tapers at the end. So if you if you liken it to something like a teardrop, that's a good way to kind of think about it. So that's where we're going there. Then I'm going to look at the bottom of here, which is the bottom corner of that. And I'm going to draw another oval. Because this is going to end up being the area where his arm's coming out. And this is going to look kind of strange at first before we get into the rest of it. But I promise you, it will turn out. And then I'm going to do another oval, a little bit smaller, pretty close to the same length. And I'm going to leave it just like that for now. And then I'm going to go ahead with an oddly shaped square. So you'll see there's kind of a curve in the top of it. And then it comes out a little bit. And then a curved top. And that's going to be what his hands are. And like I said, when we're looking at these guys, you'll notice, as I'm doing another oval in the back area here, that their arms are a lot longer than the rest of their body. So you'll see them kind of extend well past what you think they're going to go to. There's a reason when you get those little lemur toys at like the PNE or any sort of the fairs, the ones that have the... Um, the sticky hands that you can wrap around your neck. They have super long arms and little bodies and little heads. Now we know why. I'm going to make um, a little bit of a, a stick or a stump that this guy could be climbing on. So I just drew a line and I'm going to draw a line down across like that so I know what I'm kind of doing with it. And I know where his arm is going to grab onto or his back leg, mind you. So, I'm going to look at that, and I notice that his back end comes back a little more, so I'm going to kind of scribble that in there. And then, I'm going to kind of work with the fact that this is already ready to go. Drawing my lines out, and notice that his head is going to be probably somewhere around here. Right, so this top part's gonna kind of mold into the rest of the arm. It should come past the head. And then his tail, I'm gonna draw a line here and a line down like this so it kind of adds to his rear area there. And the tail's gonna probably come around and do this. We're gonna not deviate too far from this little doodle here. Right. 
and their tails are super long, remember, so give it a lot of a lot of room. And get rid of any lines you don't need outside of it. Right? And I'm going to go ahead get rid of some more of these lines, because if you have too many lines, sometimes I, I notice it gets a little confusing. I drew this right here to kind of look like where his other back legs gonna go. If you don't like seeing that without it looking like it's actually farther in the background, you can go ahead and just kind of shade that in a little bit. It gives it a little more of a look like it's in the background, right? So the next thing for me is I'm gonna do a couple ovals for some ears, but one oval here and then this is going to be more of a triangle right because it's going to be a different angle than the rest of them then we've got that famed little cheek we've had on the other one right just below the ear so right at the bottom of this part <laughs> thank you i can't wait to see your guys's guys's your guys i'm having speech issues <laughs> Anyway, so thank you very much. I bet yours are just as adorable. But yeah, so this one, I'm going to have the line here, kind of the cheek's going to come back right there. You don't have to pay a lot of attention to it. And I'm going to draw that muzzle in here. It's going to be quite small, remember? We're not doing anything super crazy with it. And I'm going to just color that in a little bit. Remember that they have this kind of weird sort of almost hairpiece looking bit at the top of their heads. And you might want to just kind of color that in before you get too far. They always seem to have like a little bit of a widow's peak at the top of their, their heads sometimes. So I'm going to draw that in and work it in like that. And then you can kind of decide where you want that eye to go. The other eye is not going to be all that visible because he's looking in a different direction, right? So just keep that in mind. And the other thing I would keep in mind is this is him reaching so he doesn't have to be super chunky there. I can bring it down a little bit. Again, these are your characters. You can make them look, you know, cute and stocky or long and lanky. Just remember that there are small little pieces of each creature that we draw that will have similarities that will make it look like that creature. So that's the only kind of thing you want to look at when you're drawing. So if you can see what I'm doing in this arm here, I know how we drew those ovals. We took out the ovals and I've added a couple things. So for this part, I've made his arm come up just past where his stomach is so it gives that impression that that's a bit longer of an arm. Um, if you look how I reach into the computer screen that when I bring my arm forward you see this part sit closer. You would actually draw circles for where my hand pads are, my fingers, and this is shortening the actual length of my finger um, instead of when I go like this, and you can see the full length of my finger. So when we're looking back at this guy, you'll notice that when he's reaching forward, these little fingers and stuff are going to be kind of long. They're not reaching into the screen like this, right? So you're not, you're not taking away from any of that length. So I'm going to just, I'm not really too interested in worrying about his fingers too much, but I'm going to give him at least a little bit of, a little bit of something here. So I just kind of scribbled it in like that. I'm not interested right now really in doing all of that too much. I kind of just want to get him started. Right now it looks pretty creepy, <laughs> but that's, that's going to get better as we go. So, 
There's that. If you want to make it look like his other hand's going back, you can do that. And you can just give the impression that either his hand's holding onto this part, or maybe there's a piece of it like that. And we're going to color that in again, just like the back leg. So you can see that it's in the background of where you're drawing. So now we've kind of got a more 3D image. You can have him, if you want, instead reaching out. Um, just make sure there's one part of his cause or something that is holding on to something else or it's going to look like he's casting some spells or something which would be kind of kind of cool really all right so he's all like that i'm going to give him a little bit of some toes he's going to have his little thumb on his foot there and i'm going to just leave this here because i kind of like how it looks remember again 13 of those rings my first one's going to start at the base of his of his tail where it meets his body. I'm gonna go ahead and just create those 13 rings. And that one's 12. Uh. Again, you don't have to have exactly 13, but I'm gonna give my guy 13, regardless of how clumsy it looks. <laughs> so yeah, so that's what we've got with those guys. Remember, we've got also where the ring around the eye is gonna be, which can help you kind of shape that eye or where it is. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we are just creating a doodle little part for the nose like we normally have and then I'm going to erase again more of the lines that we don't need and I'm going to create those lines inside the ears that show where the rest of that fuzz is coming from all right so if you haven't guessed it after that make sure that lines like that a little bit Right? And then you're going to create that little bit of shading on his back because again, there's going to be fur coming around and darker parts of the fur coming around the front. Coming down the front of the leg. And like I said, it gets, you know, whiter under the belly and you'll see inside the knee area and underneath the arms, they're going to have some pretty white fur there. And then they have some darker gray fur around the top and some brown sometimes. And that's how we draw that guy. Um, you'll notice this guy, again, has a little bit of a difference to him. He's got a rounder body, but I like this one because it shows... Excuse me, it shows a little more about how how long their limbs can be as opposed to where their their kind of torso area is. And it kind of has a little bit of an implication that there's some toes coming out over here. If you want to get fancier, you can draw some twigs on your branch. Maybe give them a, a pupil if you feel like you want to. Lemurs are always super fun. I always like watching them on TV. I always like watching them jump and move. If I can meet one one day, I'd be super excited. Hopefully everybody's doing all right. And I'm going to leave it for a few minutes so you guys can kind of take a look at what you've got going on, see what you can do. And again, like I said, we're just doing some doodling. This is a beginner course. I 
when I'm getting really serious about a drawing or if I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to kind of play with um, coloring and where the rest of his features are going, um, I will use a lot of reference and that's why I like to take my camera out. Unfortunately, we don't have lemurs, so yeah, it'd be a lot more fun going up Carmi into the, the hiking trails and taking photos of lemurs jumping around the trees, but it might be a bit of an issue in the winter time. Um, but yeah, so I, I have a camera. I try and take a lot of the photos that I have of my birds and my other creatures um, if I have access to them just because then you can kind of work from those. If you go to the free reference sites, you can take references from animals there. You can buy references. There's a whole lot of different places you can get that sort of information from to practice drawing these. If you're just doing them for for learning, then it's 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 okay to go and look on the internet and find one to, to practice with. Um, because all you're trying to do is get better at what you're doing right so there's lots of ways you can do that you can always come back to another one of my classes um any um you know there are some actual artists that have reference photos there is a site on facebook which is literally called free references for artists so that's a good one um I don't suggest using any references that you do not have permission for, regardless of what site they're on, just in case, because things like um, Pixabay and things like that will have free references, but they are also from people that you can donate funds to for taking those photos for you. Um, and sometimes it has been known for people to actually have uploaded photos that weren't theirs. Um, so if you can find the person for the original photo and ask for their permission, make sure they say it's okay, um, then that's great. But if you're just using it to practice, then there's, you can get them from Google. Um, just remember that if you're going to use them for any purposes for like selling or, or saying that you created that object, you want to make sure you have the rights to it. Um, or else you're going to get in some trouble or you're going to make some, some artists or photographers very unhappy by using their work. So I would definitely, thank you for the question, by the way, um, be very careful to where you get your, your, your stuff. Um, I will have a bunch of pictures on my page that I will put up of references of certain things that I do eventually at, at certain points. Um, if you haven't was, or visited my website, if you are more into coloring than you are drawing or you know people that like using coloring books. I have three pages on there to use as coloring books. Um, but do remember that they do remain my property. The, the image does. So please don't, don't redraw them and, and sell them on your own. Um, but you are more than welcome to color them and use them to practice drawing with. Um, but yeah, I would, I would definitely use things like Google or things like that if you're just practicing. Um, there's no harm in practicing and learning how to do things and how animals or creatures work. Watching videos and then pausing the videos, even on YouTube, things like that are a really good option also. Um, because they will give you an idea of movement a little better than just one singular photo will. If that answers your question <laughs> in a long-winded way. Um, is everybody good with the lemurs? Does anybody have any questions on certain parts? Um, I do have our voting. Um, drawing um, ideas ready, so I will reveal those in about two minutes here or so.
And like always, if you guys have drawn any of these lemurs and want to show me, please let me know. Um, I know we haven't quite yet, but I will be eventually setting up a space where I do have references of people's art that allow me to put them on my website to show what other people have come up with while we're doing these tutorials and classes. I'd be more than excited to see them or to be able to share them with others. But anyways, um, if there are no more questions, I will be putting up on the website. Um, we're either going to be doing lions or elephants the next class. So if you can let me know which one you'd prefer drawing, um, always happy to see um, what ones you like best or what ones you're more interested in doing. And for me, it sports a little bit of a challenge trying to learn how to draw these and then show you the examples of what I come up with. So that'd be kind of cool. Oh, such a fun way to spend time on a Sunday afternoon. Thanks. Oh, thank you, Candace. That's really great of you. Thank you guys all for supporting this, by the way. It's a lot of fun uh, showing people and giving examples on how to do a lot of these characters. Um, it fills my Sunday up, and it also gives me an idea on how to complete my how-to drawing um, booklet that I'm trying to put together. But yeah, um, remember again on my web webpage, it's www.shayarisart.com. You'll see it in the link on my page. Um, you can go there, you can vote which one you want to work on, which again is lions or elephants. And next month, the last Sunday of the month, um, which would be... So it'll be October 24th, which is a day after my birthday. So, haha. Um, so yeah, October 24th will either... Oh, no, I'm, I'm a liar. It's October 31st, so Halloween. Um, so I'm going to do it on October 24th anyway, because I know Halloween is a, is a, it's going to be a little busy for people. So, you know, I'm going to keep it on the 24th. And again, it's going to be lions or... Yeah, lions or um, elephants. Um, again, there are a few different types of elephants, a few different types of lions. We can go through either one of those, but um, I'm very excited either way to do each one of those. So just in case nobody heard, October, October. <laughs> so that's not quite the last Sunday of October, but it will be that day instead of Halloween so that more people can join us. But October 24th at 4 p.m. And uh, just before that happens, I will reveal the, uh, the voting results on either, again, lions or elephants. And I've got about five more minutes before this is over, so you can always shoot me a message, comment, let me know how you felt about this one. If you have any more questions about lemurs, we have quite a few things about them lately. Um, or if you honestly just want to want to chat till it's over, that's more than okay with me. I'll do the same thing with this I did with the last one. So these are just some of the angles that might be helpful if you're still trying to figure out certain spots. Um, if you are looking for more in-depth classes, I'm also opening 
uh, bookings for sketch classes and um, acrylic painting classes. Uh, what do you vote for the next class, website or Facebook page? Um, as I did mention before, it is the website at www.shayarisart.com. You can follow the link on my main page at shayarisart, or if you know how to spell my name, <laughs> you can go ahead right from there. Um, hold on. I'm going to do this just in case. www.shayarisart.com. So, on my ripped piece of paper, you can see that is the website. If it's backwards, I'm really sorry, um, but it's S-H-A-E-A-Y-R-I-S-A-R-T.com. And you should be able to vote there um, shortly after this session. Um, it won't be up until after because I'll have to go in and, uh, and get that changed, but... Uh, the awesome Jamie will be helping me with that. He's the reason we can do this split screen and everything so you can see me and the drawing at the same time. So he's pretty great. Thank you for the question, Dal. This is a good one. Um, and like I said, you can always find the contact info for me on my page um, or my website if you have any um, questions or comments or you're looking to book any sort of classes to learn to draw or, or paint. I do acrylics and sketching right now. Um, and I'll be able to let you know what pricing guides we have for that or if you have any commission questions. Um, anything along those lines, anything that we're doing in the future or anything that the plans are, or that there are plans for. Um, I will be kind of getting a little more into this as I go, as I will be starting to integrate my daily schedule into work. So that's exciting. I'll be able to do a little bit more. I'm going to have in the next little while um, some questions, or sorry, uh, Q&A videos. So if you do want to ask any questions or if you um, want to talk and comment while I'm painting, then I'll have one of those coming up eventually here. But I'll let you guys know when we do do that. But it is about time to get going. So thank you guys so much for coming to this one. Um, it is officially over and I had a lovely time and always uh, thank you again for your hour and your um, your time. I know that some of you always get kind of busy so thanks again for supporting and enjoying the drawing class. Thank you.